being turned off. During the thing? Yeah. <laughs> Way up the top again. <laughs> I got bones, I got bones, I got bones, I got bones, I got bones. We are all now very well aware of the sudden acute respiratory virus, SARS CoV 2, otherwise known as the coronavirus. We also know the disease it causes is called COVID 19. COVID 19 affects different people in different ways, and infected people can have a wide range of symptoms, from mild to severe illness. Fevers or chills, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headaches. People can lose their sense of smell or taste. People can have a sore throat often. People can have congestion or a runny nose. People can have nausea or vomiting or diarrhea. In any case, there's a wide range of symptoms and these symptoms are nonspecific and can mimic other things. But we do know that COVID-19 can affect almost every organ system in the body, not just, not just the respiratory system or your lungs. It can also affect the brain, the kidneys, the liver, the gut, and the skin, and people can have long-lasting problems long after they recover from COVID-19. Today we're going to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and the heart problems it can cause. It causes problems with the heart also, and in particular in athletes. If you are a high school athlete, it may not be worth it to take a risk of corona. Imagine you're this elite athlete, you've trained your whole life, you've spent a considerable amount of time, invested so much in preparing yourself for this career. Are you going to risk getting COVID-19, losing some lung capacity, damaging your heart, when the difference between these elite athletes is seconds, just a little bit faster on the step. That can make the difference between playing in professional leagues here, playing overseas, or not playing at all. What would you do? That's a tough call to make. You know, there are high school athletes who are not getting chances to be drafted uh, or to be picked for colleges because there's no games being played. Some of them are moving to different states where they're allowing them to continue playing sports so they can be seen by scouts. What a terrible position to be in. You know, because this is the livelihood for a lot of these, a lot of these kids. Some of who grew up with nothing, and this is their chance to get out of that. Get an education, make some money, help their families. Think about if Shaq had been not able to perform in his last couple of years of high school. Would he have gone off to college? Would he have been able to become who he is, help out his family, do all the philanthropic work that he does? That would really suck, okay? If he had damaged his heart, if he had damaged his lung capacity, and he never, never became Shaq Diesel. If you're a professional athlete and that's your livelihood, the risks are different for you. Or the risks are the same, but the risk-benefit ratio is different. So what do we know about the athlete's heart in COVID-19 for those who are asymptomatic, asymptomatic or have mild disease? Well, we know that the symptoms of mild COVID-19 disease are nonspecific. In other words, they can look like many other things. They include all the things we mentioned above. We also know about the loss of sense of smell and taste. In fact, I smell my fingers every few hours to make sure all is well. Still stinky? All good. Yeah! When a person's COVID-19 goes from mild to severe, it can include high fevers or chills, muscle aches, fatigue, shortness of breath, pneumonia or heart problems, chest pain, tightness or pressure at rest with exertion. People often re report feeling like there's an elephant sitting on their chest or a vice around the chest. Although I don't think anyone who's ever had an elephant sit on their chest survived, unless you're this guy. In patients who wind up being admitted to the hospital because the Rona got up in them, cardiac damage is very common, greater than 20% of the time. That's one in five people. However, the damage is variable, and the clinical implications of mild or asymptomatic Rona patients with cardiac issues, issues is not known. The reports of cardiac inflammation in the heart muscle in athletes has heightened the concern uh, because these patients are asymptomatic, and we've all known athletes that have had cardiac issues who collapsed on the basketball court, quite common in them. So we don't want damage to their hearts. There's no, st there's no standard definition of what exactly is clinically significant damage because of the uh, rona to the heart. But we can measure the heart enzyme, the cardiac enzymes. These are called troponins, and they're the same ones that we measure that when, when people have heart attacks. If you're an older patient with the rona, with multiple medical problems, and you've got elevated heart enzymes, that's not a good thing. However, in patients who exercise regularly, you can see transient or temporary elevations in, their heart, in those heart enzymes, and you can see their heart, left ventricle, eject less blood with each, with each beat of the heart. That's normal in athletes. So it confuses things. So currently what they do is they test for those heart enzymes for one to two days after uh, activity, and then again, one to two days 
after rest. If they still are elevated, then they get an MRI to see if the heart, uh, the heart muscle is inflamed. In high school athletes, there's a concern that patients younger than 21 years old can develop something called multi-system inflammatory syndrome, MISC. Nobody understands what this is really, but they know these patients need to be watched carefully because this happens weeks after they've seemingly recovered. If there are mild symptoms in high school athletes, the recommendations are the same as those for athletes in competitive sports with close observation. That is, rest, no exercise for 10 days after resolution of symptoms, um, and then they can go back to play with no testing necessary. For those with moderate symptoms from the uh, RONA, rest for 10 days with no sport, follow with a pediatrician, possibly an EKG, an ultrasound of the heart, looking for those heart enzymes. If you've got severe RONA, you're gonna be hospitalized because we don't want you to die. There's still lots of work to be done to understand this disease. The good news is that two companies have just announced that their RONA vaccines work really well. That being said, it's gonna take a long time for these vaccines to be distributed. They have to go around the world. And then they're all, well, you know, those people who are kind of doubters about vaccines. So, mask up, wash your hands, and socially distance. There's hope on the horizon. I got bones, I got bones, I got bones.